So today we're going to be looking at what I would consider a really well set up home defense AR. Now, before we get into it, I want to talk about the fact that the reason why I'm doing this video is because there's quite a few situations, as we've been shown and as have come out, that ARs are being used in home defense and being used to great effect. And they are a really good option for home defense due to the fact that they can carry many rounds easily and they can stop multiple aggressors with relative ease. Also, the level to which you can customize them and make them personally right for a specific task is there. So that is the why. That is why we're going to be looking at what I would consider a setup for home defense AR. Okay, so let's jump into my HD AR. Apologize for the magazine. This is not 300 blackout. This is 556, but the magazines are interchangeable. So we're only going to be looking at accessories or basic build of the rifle to get you guys an idea of the different things that you should have or what I think make a really good um, rifle setup or accessories that help complement your rifle in a home defense situation. So let's start off with the rifle itself. Now there's not too many specifications or requirements that really make one rifle greater than another. There's a whole bunch of brands out there, especially when it comes to lowers. But one thing you will want to take into consideration is barrel length. And <clears throat> for me, I highly recommend anywhere from a 16 to about a 14 inch barrel for home defense. And the reason why is you don't want something too small. I mean, you can certainly get a nine inch barrel, but it really has diminishing effect and its overall usefulness as a rifle platform for multiple different uh, scenarios is kind of scaled back when you have a very short barrel. I personally on this one am running a 16 inch barrel. I think 16 is one of the better barrel lengths, but ultimately uh, what I would say is anywhere from a 14 to a 16, maybe an 18 at tops. Ultimately you don't want anything in the 20 inch, you know, 22 inch barrels because what this rifle is primarily going to do as a home defense rifle is you're going to have to is use this rifle in navigation and you know moving around corners going through hallways you don't want a really long barrel to complicate that or basically create a snagging point you know that makes the rifle more cumbersome or harder to you know wield and for those who may say that 16 is too long in a pinch you can easily collapse your buttstock and give yourself a few inches less of overall length and, you know, it's not the most comfortable, but it works in a pinch, especially if you're in a, you know, defensive situation and you just have to act. It's nice to be able to just drop your buttstock down a little bit and reduce your overall length. So that is barrel length. So the next thing you want is a secure grip. And what I mean by this is things such as angled foregrips, things such as slings, and good positive pistol grips. Because one of the primary things in a home defense situation, you're not gonna be shooting at range. So being able to you know, hold your rifle for a long period of time, very little movement, isn't as important as being able to move your rifle or transition the barrel from you know, target to target in a very fast and efficient way. Or so these grips help you do that. And so this one is an angled foregrip, but I also have a vertical grip. What I would say uh, between an angled foregrip or a vertical grip is choose the one that allows you to index the rifle in the way that you feel most comfortable. Because I've used both and neither one has a serious advantage, though I do prefer an angled foregrip because of the way I like to index my rifle. This seems to work for me in a better way. So ultimately it comes down to preference, but having a grip allows you to move your rifle and you know move it side to side and be able to move it fast and stop it fast. And like I said, if you have to transition from multiple targets or if you see a target out of the corner of your eye and you have to move the rifle fast, grips like that are gonna help. Slings are gonna help, in my opinion, 
in a few ways. One, they're not only going to help you stabilize your rifle and its movement and transition speed, but they're also going to allow you to have an extra layer of security. If you attach this rifle to yourself via a sling, this rifle can't just fall off of you. The, the uh, perpetrator, for whatever reason, if they try to, cannot take the gun from you if it's slung to you, or they can't take it as easily, at least, uh, if it's slung to you. So having a sling is an optional thing. I wouldn't say that you absolutely need to have one, but they're really nice to consider because they allow you to have an extra layer of security and stability. So that's the first part to the kind of accessories that help aid with home defense. The next would be sighting. So what I do recommend is a red dot. And I'm not saying go out there and get the most expensive Aimpoint or EOTech, but there's a plenty of affordable options such as this Vortex Crossfire or the Vortex Spark AR. Those are the two that I personally run, but you don't have to run those per se. But they are affordable options that aren't crazy expensive, deliver good performance. I mean, a red dot's a red dot, so, so long as it illuminates and holds a zero, it's an effective red dot. At the end of the day, you really should consider a red dot for a couple reasons. One, they allow a much easier transition and target acquisition. I like to think of this as if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're going to be droggy, you know, your mind's not going to want to, uh, you know, pick up and do the most complicated things. So having a ba very basic, you know, sighting system like this is going to make doing your job much easier. So that's really all for sighting. It's very basic. I don't necessarily recommend lasers because if you do add a laser, it's just one more thing that you have to keep batteries in. It's one more thing that you have to sight in and make sure functions properly. And additionally, it's one more thing that in the, the event of a situation, you have to turn on and activate. Next thing we're gonna take a look at is weapons mounted lights and this has been a area of contention for quite a few people and in the gun community because there is a kind of thought that with weapons mounted lights you know wherever this flashlight is illuminating you know the barrel is also pointing in the same direction however I strongly encourage weapons mounted lights for a few reasons and the biggest one being that the KISS principle of once again we've realized that if you have to wake up in the middle of the night you know having a nightstand flashlight such as this this is my nightstand flashlight a Phoenix UC 35 is great having this on your you know nightstand to grab and go is good but the probability of you potentially forgetting this is pretty high and you don't essentially you don't want to be you know clearing the hallway or you know down a few rooms and realize oh you know my flashlight's back in my room and there's no way of realistically going back there and getting it so it's important that you have a weapons mounted light because even if I were to forget this flashlight, I still have a flashlight on the firearm. And even if I have to end up, you know, muzzling someone that I didn't intend to with this flashlight on, at least I can distinguish them as, you know, someone who's not an aggressor or an intruder. And I can properly identify the intruders that are actually there. Highly encourage weapons mounted lights, and they're not terribly hard, especially when we look at an AR, to mount them. Now, I'm not going to get into how you should mount them to each their own. I personally have mine this way. You know, it's very forward. It's actually a little bit in front of the barrel, which is not my exact favorite position, but it works well for me. The most important thing you're going to want to do when mounting a flashlight, in my opinion, is make sure that the end of the flashlight, this part here, is at least in front or right around the muzzle because if you have this too far back what's going to happen is that the flashlight is going to have some blind spots or some throw some shadows due to it catching the forend or the muzzle of the firearm so you do want to make sure that at least the end of the or the end of the flashlight is around the end of the muzzle. So as far as flashlights go, there's plenty of options. One thing I go back to the KISS principle of is the fact that you really want to keep this stupidly simple. And the reason why I chose an Innova T2 by Innova slash Night Eyes is because it is really simple. You can see that so there's only one actuate, actuation switch, and that's right here at the end of the uh, 
flashlight and all I have to do is click it once for high output or click it twice into my strobe. It's very simple to use and it's very basic. And once again, I wanna keep that very basic, easy to use principle because when I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm not going to want to have to deal with something like this flashlight, which even though it's great and you know it has these five output levels and it's cool and it has a really nice strobe and it is very bright. What I don't like about this uh, Phoenix is the fact that it has two buttons that I have to use and in order to get to strobe I have to physically turn the flashlight on and then hold the second button. That is something I'm not a huge fan of and that's the reason why this Phoenix, while it might be a nightstand flashlight and it works okay for that, I would rather have something like this Innova T2 on the weapon because once again it's very basic, you know I can easily kick it into strobe or I can just turn it on to normal brightness, whatever I need in the situation. Okay guys, so those are the major aspects of <clears throat> a home defense AR. Of course, there's different things that you can personally take a look at from triggers to, you know, muzzle devices and many different things such as charging handles, you know. There's all kinds of things you can take a look at, but those are the most important accessories that you want to make sure that you take a look at and add to your rifle if you are intending to use it for home defense. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.